and listen to the story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Stay right there, honey. I'm going to give you some rock salt and some bacon rind to go with your corn. What'd you shoot, Granny? Shot my hat. What for? There was a crow checking on it. That's what. Where? Granny, you're getting too old to do your own skier crowing. Your joints will lock on you. Why don't you let me make you one? Because there ain't no steer crow that can shoot straight. You didn't do too good yourself. Oh, I got the crow. I blowed that rascal to kingdom come. There ain't enough left of him to feather an arrow. Granny, would you please stop shooting at Elmer? It's making him awful nervous. Get that varmint out of here. Speak to her, Pa. Well, she's making a nervous wreck out of him. I'll make a pie out of him. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Dragging in dead birds. You look very dead to me. That rock salt preserves you. Hey! Somebody shot through the window of my bedroom. Look at here. Worst case of dander I've ever seen. That's rock salt. And this here's a piece of bacon rind. I ain't gonna cure it. You'll have to dip his head in hot creosote. Now listen, Granny. Did... Calm down, boy. Granny, suppose you go out and look after your corn crop. What's the use? Nobody can grow nothing around here. What with the crybabies, the crows, and the bats. We ain't got no bats. What about the old bat next door? Hey. Call the police every time you try to do something to improve the place, like raise hogs or chickens or run a few goats. Granny, you can't fault Miss Drysdale for that. You got to remember you're living in the city. You call this living? I'm buried in the city, and I'm getting tired of it. All right, Granny. Why can't we live in the country where folks can breathe, raise things, and shoot off a gun? All right. Oh. Uh, listen, youngins, I got a first-rate idea. You know, Granny's birthday is coming up soon. I know. Yeah, I'm going to make a scarecrow for her corn patch. And I'm going to make her a great big old cedar chest. You know how she's always talked about needing one. It was dandy present. You know what I'm going to give her? What, what huh? A piece of ground, a nice plot out in the country where she can plant things. Hot dog! I'll call Mr. Drysdale. Oh, excuse me, Uncle Jet. You don't have to call Mr. Drysdale about buying a plot of ground. I seen some for sale yesterday. You did? Well, yes, sir. Out in the country, too. Great big sign alongside the road said, Buy your loved one a plot in Happy Valley. <laughs> Happy Valley. Green is like that. I like a fun spot. Oh, here he is. Happy Valley. I'll call him for you, Pa. Uh, here's a number, Ellie. Now, 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 remember, not a word to Granny. You want this to be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valley, Mr. Mortimer speaking. Oh, hi, Mr. Mortimer. This here is Jed Clampett. I'm wanting to buy a nice plot of ground for Granny. I see. Jed Clampett. And you want something nice for your grandmother? Well, no, uh, strictly speaking, she's my mother-in-law. Oh? Uh, something inexpensive, then. <laughs> oh, money is no object. I want the best you got, provided, of course, this land of yours is out in the country. Oh, it is, Mr. Clampett. Happy Valley is in a beautiful pastoral setting. Oh, good, good. It's pasture land. <laughs> 
Well, I, I reckon that'll be just dandy. Uh, you see, Granny don't want to be buried in the city, especially in the backyard. Well, I should hope not. As a matter of fact, it's against the law. <laughs> oh, yeah, we found that out. Every time we go to digging, our neighbor calls the police. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Clampett, uh, are you by any chance on welfare? No, sir. Crestview. 518 Crestview Drive. Uh, no, no. I'm referring to your ability to meet your obligations. I appreciate your calling Happy Valley, but I will have to ask about credit. Well, it was Jethro seeing your sign, so, uh, I reckon he ought to get the credit. Uh, no, Mr. Clampett, you don't understand. Uh, let me put it this way. Do you have a bank account? Yes, sir. I keep my money in a Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. Jitter's Paws Granny. I'll talk to you later. Bye. What's going on? You look guilty as three possums in a hen house. What are you talking about, Granny? Was that on the telephone? Well, nobody, Granny. <laughs> Ready to call on the bereaved family, Mr. Mortimer. Good. Now, here's your fact sheet. The name is J.D. Clampett. The address is Beverly Hills, and the bank account is $65 million. And the name of the loved one? Look, as far as I'm concerned, it's J.D. Clampett. I meant the name of the dearest party. I don't know. It's his mother-in-law. They call her Granny. I want you to try to sell him a family plot. Now, these people are loaded. I see there are four in the family. Yes, but I want you to sell them five plots, one for their banker. Banker? Believe me, when Clampett goes, that guy will kill himself. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, the banker's married, too. Sell him a six-pack. <laughs> Mr. Mortimer, try to remember you're not peddling beer anymore. <laughs> I'm not peddling plots, either. The guy that sold me this property said I'd make a killing here. I may have to to get any business. <laughs> Take it easy on that jug, too. This is strictly for medical purposes. I can feel the rheumatism burning its way up my legs. I gotta build me a fire break across my stomach. More? That was from a left leg. <laughs> Through chemistry. You ain't got rheumatism in your arm. Come to think of it. No, give me that. That's enough. There's a man to see you, Pa. Oh, it's about your mother in law, Granny. You ain't from the police, are you? No, I'm from. Good. I was hoping they hadn't heard about the shoot. There's been a shooting. It's Granny. <laughs> What can I do for you, Pot? I'm from Happy Valley. Oh, yeah. I want to get a plot of ground for Granny. Oh, Ellie May, keep a watch out the back door. See, we ain't surprised. Yes, sir, Pa. Well, we have some uh, very nice plots. How would you like a hillside location? No, I had enough of that back home. Hillside ain't no place for planting. First good rain comes along, body could get washed out. <laughs> Ellie? You recollect what happened with the greens? Sure do, Pa. We put them in on a hill back of the cabin. Along came a cloudburst. The next morning, there was greens all over that back porch. <laughs> you couldn't go out the back door without stepping on them. We just let the hogs and chickens have them. You warm? Uh, you no, know, no. As a matter of fact, I think I'm having a chill. Well, have a slug of this. Uh, no, no, thank you. Good for what ails you. Sure took care of Granny. What do you mean? Two drinks of that, and she didn't feel a thing. That's, that's very, uh, very merciful. Where is the loved one now? Who? Yeah, Granny. Oh, she's out back in the corn patch? In the corn patch. Makes a dandy scarecrow. See her yonder? 
She's propped up against that clothesline post. You don't intend to leave her out there like that, do you? Oh, she's all right. Just twixt you and me, she's pretty well pickled. Pickled? She was commencing to stiffen up. <laughs> well, I think I'd better get back to the office. Oh, wait a minute. What about Granny's plot? Well, well uh, that'll be up to Mr. Mortimer. Well, now I want it nice and level and plenty big so we can put in some greens. The greens out here? Sure. We aim to put in a whole bunch of them. Well, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Mortimer. Yeah, and tell him not to say nothing. We want it to be a surprise. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And don't you say nothing, neither. No, no, no. Word, word of honor. <laughs> what are you babbling about? Are you trying to tell me that Clampett shot his mother-in-law? Shot her, pickled her, and put her out in the corn patch for a scarecrow. <laughs> what are you putting me on? Mr. Clampett and his daughter are cold-blooded killers. Daughter's in on it, too? They make Bonnie and Clyde look like the Bobsy twins. <laughs> what did you sell them? I'm telling you, they are murderers. Back in the hills, they wiped out an entire family, the Greens. You mean like a feud? Yes. And now they're planning to surprise the Greens out here. Hey, wait a minute. This may be just the break I've been waiting for. <laughs> you can bury an awful lot of Greens with 65 million bucks. I quit. Oh, no, you don't. You're into me for five weeks' salary, and you haven't even sold your first plot yet. Sue me. I'll do better than that. I'll call Clampett, and I'll tell him your name is really Green. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Happy Valley, Mortimer speaking. Well, hello, Mr. Clampett. What a pleasant surprise. My salesman and I were just talking about you. Yes, he'll be right over with the contracts for you to sign. Going back there? Say, I never did catch that salesman's name. His name? I'll spell it for you. G-R... Right, I'm going. I mean B-R-U-B-A-K-E-R. Brubaker. Did he tell you I wanted plenty of room to put in some green? Mr. Clampett, you can have one entire section of Happy Valley just for the green. We'll call it Green Acres. Huh? <laughs> How do you like it? Well, first off, it ain't cedar. It's pine. Well, I know, but we ain't got no cedar trees. You cut down one of our trees to make that? No, sir. Cut down one of Miss Drysdale. <laughs> Why? So Granny won't know about it. Well, Miss Drysdale will know about it. She's going to yell bloody murder. She ain't home. <laughs> but when she comes home and sees what you've done, she'll likely call the police. No, she won't. I gnawed the stump, so it looked like a beaver done it. Go <laughs> ahead. Oh, Get over there and dig a hole. We try to put in a new tree before she gets back. Look here, Pa. I bade Granny a birthday cake. Well, now, would you look at that? Hey, that's hard as a rock. Why, well, go dig a hole. Yes, sir. You want me to bury it pan and all? <laughs> for the tree, boy, for the tree. Well, Ellie, that's a dandy looking cake. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of body to it, eh? What kind is it? Oh, this here's a marble cake. Uh -huh. Well, now, I reckon you're going to write happy birthday, Granny, on there with icing, huh? Yes, sir, Pa. Are we going to have a surprise party? That'd be nice if we could hide all this stuff from Granny for two more days. Oh, well, I could hide my scarecrow and my cake in Jethro Cedar Chest. Yeah? Well, I'll take this in and put some icing on it. Oh, uh, honey, that might be a little risky right now. Granny keeps coming back in the kitchen for rheumatiz booster shots. <laughs> Get out of my kitchen, you hairy little boomer. How many times have I told you that apes are not people? These marbles. Oh, oh, I can't make it. My joints are all froze stiff with the rheumatiz. And relief is just to swallow her away. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie, honey, help your poor old granny. I was only funding you when I called you a varmint. You was one of the family. Pull the cork and give your poor old granny some medicine. That's it, sweetheart. Now, 
Pour some in the glass. <laughs> oh, you're such a darling. <laughs> Raise the glass to Granny's lips so she can thaw out. <laughs> You have hit a new low, drinking with an H. I ain't drinking of my own free will, Jed. This little varmint is forcing it on me. Shame on you, you little wino. <laughs> Turned off kind of warm, didn't it? Granny, listen to me. You go upstairs and take a nap. Well, I can't. I gotta watch my corn. You gotta watch your health. I'll drink to that. There you go. Now you go up and lay down and rest. It's too hot in the house. Well, then go in the root cellar and lay down. Good idea. I'll take this with me to keep it away from that alcoholic ape. Oh, I'll take it with me. Now you go have yourself a good long sleep. How about a nightcap? Good idea. Pull it down over your ears. <laughs> Yes, now, Pa? Sure, Ellie, I got the lid fixed. All I have to do is now is saw off a couple of these boards. Where? <gasps> oh, where's my cake? Jethro's doing the printing for you. He's the best in the family, you know. But I my Dyson, yeah. Oh. Well, here he comes. We'll tell him not to bother. Hey, take a look at this letter. If you like it, I'll put happy birthday right above Granny. Cut into my cake. How'd you do that, boy? With a hammer and chisel. Tell me that. You done broke my marble cake. Marble is rot. Right. I done broke two chisels on it. <laughs> we got a lot to do before Granny wakes up. Get through. You letter them garden markers, Ellie Mae. You commence calling folks and invite them to the birthday celebration. Hi, Pa. Look who's coming. That's him, the one with the saw. What is that he's making? A casket. What else? <laughs> it's horrible. I warned you. Yeah, I figured on selling him one of those $10,000 bronze jobs. <laughs> Let's drive on. Oh, no. That man is a drunken, mad dog. He kills in cold blood. <laughs> but he pays in cold cash. <laughs> you coming, Mr. Green? No, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Mr. Clappett? I'm Mortimer of Happy Valley. Glad to meet you, Mr. Mortimer. That's my daughter, Ellie Mae. Howdy. Uh, oh, how do you do? I'll commence calling folks, Paul. <laughs> that young fellow over there with the markers is my nephew, Jethro. Howdy. How do you do? Uh, did you say those were markers? Yeah, we're going to use them out at Happy Valley to mark off different plots. Uh, are they for the greens? Greens or whatever else we choose to put in. Uh, carbs and melons. Not the Harvey melons. <laughs> I don't believe I'm familiar with them. Uh, good, but it still looks like we're going to do a lot of business. Uh, Brubaker, may I have those contracts, please? How do you do, Mr. Clampett? Howdy. Have you uh, heard anything from the police? Well, no. Uh, for a while there, I was afraid Miss Drysdale next door was going to call him, but we think we figured a way to keep her quiet. Get through! You got that hole dug for Miss Drysdale? Oh, yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Fine and dandy. We'll plant her quick as we take care of Granny. Is Granny still in the corn patch? Oh, no. She's stretched out in the root cellar. It's cooler there. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Clampett, I'd like to suggest that Mr. Brubaker and I take Granny back to Happy Valley with us. No, no, we'll fetch her out day after tomorrow. That's your birthday. Well, that's a very sweet sentiment, Mr. Clampett, but I wouldn't wait two days. <laughs> well, if we don't, it's going to spoil the celebration. <laughs> celebration? <laughs> yeah, Jethro made her that pine box. Uh, could I perhaps suggest something in prom? Well, no, the boy worked hard on that. It's kind of rough, but uh, it ain't the gift, it's the thought. <laughs> and, uh, your daughter Ellie made that marble thing? Yeah, that's part of the celebration. We thought we'd put them and Granny on the truck, go out to Happy Valley and have a picnic. 
Yeah, you know, music, dancing, fiddle, the kind of box social. <laughs> you having another chill? Definitely. Well, come on, uh, have a little snort. You too, Mr. Mortimer. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, the man has invited us for a drink. That's the anesthetic he administers before he shoots you. Two drinks of that and you don't feel a thing. <laughs> here you are, Mr. Brubaker. Uh, no, thank you. Well, uh, how about you, Mr. Mortimer? Well, certainly, I'll have a shot, uh, a snort. <laughs> well, down the hatch. <laughs> I wouldn't drink that too fast. <laughs> you all right, Mr. Mortimer? That's powerful stuff. <laughs> Did he say Granny? That's the corpse. <laughs> Brought her back to life. Let's go back to Happy Valley. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna subdivide that place. But no more cemetery? Are you kidding? When they market this stuff, who's gonna need it? <laughs> I'll take that, Granny. No, over my dead body. Oh, who's the pine box her? Somebody pass on? Ah, it's me! I ain't never touching another drop again. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmwise presentation.